Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well. So today I'm going to discuss about Docker. Those who don't know me about me, I am Adil Rahman, an AWS Certified Solutions Architect and also a Linux uh, expertise and a DevOps engineer. So um, what is Docker? So Docker is a uh, tool to design and make it easy for create deploy and run applications using containers so that's that by definition this is what docker tells it so what is container so you think of container like uh, you put everything inside a container and then ship it to somewhere else and then they open they get the all those things that you shipped over there exactly as it is so think of docker container similar as a normal container that you build your applications you design your applications using some tools for example I am building a web applications using PHP Apache and MySQL so these are three uh, softwares that is required to run my application I can create a container which already consists an Apache server a PHP 7.2 and a MySQL 5.5 and then I create a docker image I push my application I put my applications over there create a docker image and then I send the docker image to some other person it can be a production environment it can be other developers and they just run the docker image and then application is up and running immediately so that's the beauty of docker that you containerize all those tools that is designed that is required all those extensions that is required for your application to run properly let's say i build an application for specifically php uh, 7.2 and then it become popular it's running on uh, different machines different productions and then suddenly a new versions arises of PHP let's say PHP 8 which is completely different completely different and then your server is upgraded to PHP 8 and then suddenly your application is not working why because it's developed using PHP 7.2 and the changes that was in PHP 8 was completely different it's totally different this might happen I'm not saying that it will happen but there is a chances that you might get some warnings might get some errors which is easily fixable but um, if it's in a production environment then the customers or users are already seeing that so that's a big problem and your application is not stable your customers are you just lost all your 50,000 customers in a, just a single minute and then all gone why because your application suddenly showing errors because of a different page versions we can avoid that <coughs> by using docker by containerizing our applications so that whatever the host the server os php version is we can have our own environment that is completely isolated that is completely separated and then they can have their own php versions running over there they can run own uh, Apache versions, own operating systems, own database servers, own specific things. So you can you can set up the whole Docker image in a way that it runs anywhere. So that's the beauty of Docker that you build on and run anywhere. So that's the basically beauty of Docker. So containers allow a developer to package up an application with all the parts it needs such as libraries other dependencies and ship it all it in a package and by doing that the application will run on any other Linux machine regardless on, uh, of any customization settings that machine might have so whatever the settings of that particular machine your application should will run properly if they use docker so the benefits of docker for both developer and system administrator is you don't have to worry or you don't have to say it again that it works on my local so uh, docker makes it very uh, smooth and simple that you feel if it's run your local it will run on your production environment as well so it is a very important uh, 
toolkit for DevOps. Why we use it? The main reason that we use it is that we don't want to mess up with uh, setting up all those production environment. We don't need where we don't we want to do very rapid application development. We want to do agile developments, new sprints coming up each week, and we don't have to. Uh, time to set up a whole development environment for hours. So maybe you have you are just you have uh, five co-workers and then you build up something and then you wanted to um, ask your co-worker to run that on his uh, PC but then he's using uh, Linux and you are using Windows and then you get a whole lot of things to figure it out how it works. So to avoid these issues, to avoid these um, dependencies, to avoid these differences, we can use a common platform, Docker, which will completely eradicate the whole issue of it works on my machine, it works on Windows and doesn't work on Linux, something like this. So you make it Docker containerized and then it will run on anywhere. So for developers, it means that they can focus on writing code that they love. What we, we as a developer love to write codes. It's the magical tool that we have. We build applications, we are dreamers. So we don't want to mess up with the environment, working for hours to set up a Linux machine to run these applications. While using Docker, you can do it in five seconds. You pull it, you run it, and that's it. That's it, literally that's it. You just give your co-workers the docker image they run it and then application is up and running and they do their stuff so that's for developers but for uh, system managers or operations docker gives the flexibility and potentially reduces the number of system needed because it's a small footprint and lower overhead so you might have a lot of things that is uh, running requires for different applications like you have RabbitMQ, you have MySQL, you have Apache, you have MongoDB, a lot of things are there. And as a system administrator, it's hard to manage all those things. But if you containerize these dockers, then the overhead becomes less and everything is managed inside that. Okay, so we know that what is Docker is, then how we can use, what are the tools uh, we use for Docker? So uh, first of all, Docker Compose, Docker Swarm. Docker Compose is used for defining and running multi-container applications. So you create a compost file. Uh, it's a configuration file that defines uh, what are the uh, other images will be used. Commonly public images will be used and what are the configurations, what are the paths, what are the ports, where do the log files will stay, what are the user and password of a database server that is created. So using a Docker Compose, you can have multi-container application. That means an application if you need a web server, you need a database server, you need a Redis cache, then you can use Docker Compose. So your each individual uh, containers can run on an individual uh, individually. Like you have an Apache server, you have a MySQL server, you have a Redis server. They are individually running. Using Docker Compose, you can have a application that is a monthly container using this Docker. So that's Docker Compose and then Docker Swarm. Docker Swarm is provides native clustering functionality for Docker containers. And you can use this uh, to, which turns a group of Docker engines into a single virtual Docker engine. So you can think of it like uh, you, you have multiple uh, Docker engines and then you consider it as one single virtual Docker engine using Docker Swarm. Okay. Then uh, what are the benefits? I just already discussed. Uh, if you use Docker, your development will be very fast and cost saving because you using a Docker container and uh, there is no time for setting up on your local environment that reduces the development time. So you have think of it that you have 10 developers in a team that working differently. Some are front end, some are back end summer quality assurance. And then if you just spend five hours for setting up the environment application on each of the PC, then it's cost already 50 hours, five zero, only for setting up the development environment, only for setting up the application to run on your things. So that's, that's a big waste of time, big, big waste of time. To my understanding, if you wanted to have fast development, 
and um, you have to do things fast then use docker and also if you use docker then you, your application deployment goes very smooth so you what what runs on your local you create an image and push it to production then it runs over there as well because it's it's docker that it should supposed to run that's the job of the docker so that's the benefit of docker then uh, secure the application and run it on containers are separately segregated and isolated from each other so you have multiple containers and they are separated so they are secured in a way that they are not uh, overlapping each other resources and also overlapping each other data application sharing so they are secured for example you have a big uh, you have a server and you have multiple applications but if you don't use docker then uh, they are um, even though they are on separated but they can actually actually can access their data access their uh, credentials so it is uh, possible and it's not that uh, it's easily possible but it's theoretically possible and if your application is uh, malware affected and then if for example one application you have in your server is malware affected or uh, very buggy code or something like this and some hacker get uh, control of the of, of your application using that uh, bad code and then he, they get control of all other projects that's on their server but when you have a docker then you have these are containers separated so they are completely isolated each other it's like they are completely separate machines but within the same machine so that's the benefit of docker then all containers are by uh, run by a single operating system kernel and thus more lightweight and then virtual machines so uh, why it's docker is lightweight because uh, they it runs on a single operating system and it's compared to be very lightweight compared to the virtual machines it's not like uh, you have a separate virtual machine but it's a um, it's a container system that uh, runs on the OS level. Then it has both enterprise and community editions and community editions is free for delivering container solutions. So uh, for Docker, we have both enterprise and community editions and community editions is free. Enterprise edition is for the enterprises who wants to have something more. Then drawback of Docker. Okay, so now we discussed about benefits. Now let's discuss what are the drawbacks. Lack of features like containers, self-registration and self-inspects, copying files from one host and container and more. So these are, um, are some drawbacks. It needs to have a backup and recovery strategy if a container goes down. So these are the uh, drawbacks. I think it's not really applicable to everyone, but if it's applicable, then there are some solutions over there as well, which you can look for Google. Docker in AWS, that's our main concern. We know that Docker is fairly good and uh, it's uh, cool, it's awesome, it's new. So how do we run it on AWS? That's the question, right? Uh, Docker can be run on AWS using AWS Fargate, Amazon ECS, Amazon EKS, AWS Patch and they make it very easy to run Docker containers at scale. AWS also provides support for both Docker open source and commercial solutions, uh, uses uh, Docker for AWS microservices, data processing, etc. So AWS um, supports AWS Fargate, Amazon AWS ECS, Amazon EKS, and Batch as a Docker container service. We are already at the end of our discussions, so Today, I am just telling you in a small way, in a bigger picture, what Docker is and how it can give you benefit for your development team and uh, why you can, how you can use Docker. So it can reduce your development time. It can reduce your um, deployment uh, cost and also the deployment process. And also it can reduce the system administrator's headache for managing multiple uh, applications multiple softwares in a server. So Docker makes everything smooth, easy and simple. And I hope we all use Docker uh, much, much in our day-to-day -day activities, which can help our development team to work more on coding and less on infrastructure setup. So thank you for <coughs> watching my video. I hope you like this. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel.
I really appreciate you if you have done this and I will get more and more of these kind of videos tutorials for you also comment below what you want to uh, see in my next next video so that I can create those thank you have a nice day bye